what's up guys uh, i welcome you again to the physics video lecture series my name is rajat sharma and today we'll be studying projectile motion so projectile motion now projectile motion uh, is basically any kind of motion that is planar in nature so planar means two dimensional motion so there is x coordinate involved and also there is y coordinate involved so the motion is planar and force is present in one dimension so let us take the easiest example that comes to our mind okay so the easiest easiest example is when you throw a ball under the effect of gravity so suppose you are standing here and you throw a ball this is the ground and you are throwing the ball at a certain angle let us say theta and you throw it with a certain velocity u okay so clearly you can see that there are two coordinates involved one is the x coordinate and other is the y coordinate so y is representing the height of the ball how much is it above the ground and x represent the horizontal displacement of the ball okay what is the length traveled by the ball in the horizontal direction you can clearly see so it is satisfying the first condition the other condition is that the force is present in one dimension so in this case the only force that is acting on the ball throughout the motion is the force of gravitation and you can see that irrespective of the position of the ball during the journey the force of gravitation is always in the same dimension and that dimension is y dimension y axis okay this is the y axis this is the x axis and the force is always acting towards minus y direction okay <coughs> so since it is satisfying both the condition this is a classic example of projectile motion we can have other examples as well so instead of gravitational force if you take electrical force you throw a charge under electric field so that will also be a simulation of if you suppose there is a charge and you throw it like this with a velocity v and there is electric field like this the charge is q so the charge will always experience a force q e in the minus y direction okay i can write like this and the velocity vector was v so again it is satisfying both the conditions so the charge will ex execute projectile motion the trajectory in a projectile motion is parabola <coughs> okay the trajectory in projectile motion is parabola okay so uh, <coughs> so uh, we'll discuss uh, we can discuss any of the situation we can discuss the situation of charge or we can discuss the situation of any particle thrown under gravity and we'll derive some general expression for various quantities okay so let us assume that we are solving these equations for a ball that has been thrown under the effect of gravity okay so we'll try to solve the various quantities <coughs> so this is the situation a ball has been thrown with a velocity v at an angle of theta from the horizontal okay you can clearly see that if this is the starting point the ball is covering a certain horizontal distance when it reaches back to its original position 
so this horizontal distance is known as range okay so range is the horizontal distance traveled by the ball or tra tra covered by a projectile during its complete motion okay secondly you can see that the ball is reaching a maximum height so we call this maximum height as h max the third quantity that is coming to your mind is what is the total time of the travel so in general <coughs> the unknown quantities or the quantities that we try to calculate are range h max total time and there is another thing that we try to calculate and that is x and y coordinate as a function of time t okay these are the four quantities that we want to calculate for this projectile motion okay what is given to us we are given initial velocity okay angle of projection and acceleration or basically the force force field okay because the force field is less then quantities will vary if the angle of projection is different then quantities will vary similarly if initial velocity is more or less the quantities will vary okay so these are the three initial conditions that are must for solving questions of projectile so let us see how we'll proceed <coughs> the first thing that i i want you to understand is that i can break the velocity of the projectile into two components so this is very simple velocity is a vector quantity so i can resolve the vectors into two different dimensions and why i am doing this because i have already told you that there are two coordinates involved okay one is the x coordinate and the other is the y coordinate and the velocity is like this so if i want to solve the i want to find the value of x and y so i should resolve velocity in those coordinates na that's very simple so i'll resolve the velocity in the two coordinates so clearly you can see if i complete this right angle triangle this base this will be the horizontal component this will be v cos theta because you can see in this triangle cos theta is equal to base upon hypotenuse so base is hypotenuse cos theta and hypotenuse is v this is the hypotenuse so the base is v cos theta and the perpendicular component will be v sin theta so now <coughs> i can write it like this so this is the projectile i have a vertical component of v sin theta and i have a horizontal component of v cos theta okay now you forget about the original velocity if you see at the acceleration there is acceleration present only in the y direction okay i can write like this ay and ax is there any acceleration in the x direction no there is no acceleration because the gravitational force is acting only in the vertical direction so acceleration in x direction is zero and acceleration in y direction is minus g <coughs> okay very simple minus g because i am taking the upward direction as positive and gravitational force always act in the downward direction so the direction is negative so that's why i am taking minus g okay <coughs> so the acceleration is ay minus g and ax as zero similarly vy velocity in the y direction is v sin theta the vertical component 